Hello guys, it's Mashtag here and today I can proudly tell you that I got Wi-Fi working for the RG350. Yes, you heard right. We can have internet access on our RG350. And it opens up a new world to this device. Um, I'm thinking about firmware updates, application updates, emulator updates, maybe we could even get ROMs directly to our device over the internet. We can make use of app features like um, ROM scraping in emulation station. So you just put your ROMs on your device, you start emulation station and it automatically scrapes all your ROMs and gives them box art and description stuff. Um, or make use of um, the multiplay, multiplayer games um, option in RetroArch. This is another huge thing that we could get when we have internet access on our RG350. And it's, it's a cool idea sitting on your couch and playing like Mario Kart together with your neighbor or someone in a different country or yeah, maybe just your, your best friend on the couch so you can just share it in, in the same network. Yeah, or even wireless data transfer is now possible with Wi-Fi. So no more need to connect your USB cable to your RG350. And I think in summary, it makes the device or gives the device the possibility to become a lot more user friendly than it is right now. I have to say big thanks to the Discord community that supported me so much with information. A lot of people there helped me out when I had questions and gave me hints and tips or maybe some some tooling for to establish this. So to be honest, I wouldn't have been able to do this on my own. I, I got huge support. Especially I would like to say thank you to H the B and Circuit. These two guys provided me so much with information and stuff. And finally with the last puzzle part in this thing which is um, GCW Connect um, a tool that I, I needed in the end to make WPA configuration possible so huge thanks to you guys and to the whole community before I start and tell you guys how you can um, get Wi-Fi working on your RG350 I would like to talk a bit about the background so the stuff that I did at the beginning where I started and I think it it might be interesting for some of you guys to know a little more about the background and how Wi-Fi works, how you s enable it, how you start it. So I would like to start with a connection to my RG350. I have a PuTTY connection. Um, if this is too nerdish to some of you guys, um, just skip the video. But I really wanted to have it within this video because I think it belongs to this video to talk a bit about the background. So if you're interested, you're welcome to stay. Otherwise, just skip a couple of minutes. Okay, so the first thing I was looking for was the drivers because I heard or I read that there are going to be two drivers available. Um, it's the RTL 8188EU driver and the RTL 81 92 CU driver. So I looked them up and they were already available in my firmware version. I'm running on version 1.7. So for your information, they are located in lip mo modules. Um, open kernel drivers net wireless and here they are so if you take a short look into this we find both of the drivers um, here is the 88 EU and here is the 92 CU driver so both drivers are av available so in general we could make use of two chipsets that are built into Wi-Fi adapters and I ordered both chipsets but started my test with the 88 EU driver. So if you take a look into the environment and see what drivers are, are loaded with LS mode. Oh, <laughs> I already did that for testing. So I'm, let me just remove this driver. 
One more time. What? Okay. Um, so at the moment there is no driver loaded, and if you check your internet, uh, <laughs> if you check your network interfaces. You see there's only just the loopback device, which is always there, and our USB 0 device with this common IP address, uh, 10.1.1.2, which we are currently using for data transfer between the RG350 and our PC, for example. I, for myself, use it together with WinSCP. So, in the next step, we have to load the driver and therefore um, I jump back to the history there we have to insmod the driver and as I told you I started with the um, 8188 EU driver so I just loaded the driver it takes a little time now if you check with LSmod you see the driver is this driver module is loaded and in the next step you can check your Wi-Fi um, adapter. Since I already put the adapter into my device, so in general it's a USB-C to USB adapter with OTG support. This is important to have. And a small Wi-Fi dongle that supports this chipset 8188EU. <clears throat> um, my next step was I, I checked the interface and there was no interface there so to have to bring the Wi-Fi adapter up and this can be done by calling ifconfig WLAN0 which is the first Wi-Fi interface and just bring it up the Wi-Fi interface is up now and we can check this by typing ifconfig and as you can see now we have a new Ethernet interface a WLAN0 which is our Wi-Fi interface and it already got the MAC address from the device but we don't have a IP address since we're not connected to the router we just have the hardware running together with the driver so the next step would be to scan for access points and this can be done on the terminal with IW list scan. As you can see, the loopback device and USB 0 device um, are skipped because they don't support scanning. Only Wi Fi devices support scanning. And yeah, you can see it found all the access points around me. Let me scroll up. Mine is called Internet Box. Okay, it's right there. So the ESS ID, which is the name of your Wi Fi, here mine is Internet Box. And as you can see, it is WPA2 secured and that was my my last my final um, problem I had to solve because I wasn't able to connect to my router because um, WPA encryption is a little different to do on the terminal it would have been a lot easier with WEP but I didn't want to reconfigure my router to work with WAP because it is very insecure and I don't suggest to you guys to do it out there. Maybe I would have done it just for testing, but I'm happy um, I got it working with WPA and WPA2, which is the current security standard that we all use and should use. So at this point, I would have to edit a, a file that is located under etc call VPA um, supplic supplicant configuration. Um, here in this file there is a network section where I would have to add my ESSID and my v WPA key but this area is read only so I was not able to add anything to this section and there finally some guy from Discord helped me out. Um, his name is Circuit. He provided me the gcwconnect.opg, which is a Wi-Fi network manager. 
and with that network manager I was able to enter my access point and to enter my security key so finally I was able to connect to my Wi-Fi and have connection to the internet and this is the part where I want to stop with the background stuff now I want to show you how you guys can easily get Wi-Fi working on your device so grab your RG350 and let's start right ahead so let's start downloading the GCW Connect OPG I put you the link um, to that OPG into the description and when you follow the link you get to this um, github repository right here and there you find the OPG file just click on download wait for the file to be downloaded okay check your download folder and there is the gcwconnect.opg that file we need to copy to our RG350 so let's make a connection to the RG350 I prefer using WinSCP and navigate to your apps directory it's located in media data apps and just simply drag and drop that OPG file there since I already have installed it to my device it's just gonna override it and yeah this is the only software we need on the device so we have the Wi-Fi management tool now installed to our RG350 let's connect the adapter and the Wi-Fi dongle to our device so here's basically what we need we need to have a USB-C to USB-A so standard USB adapter and this one um, supports OTG and uh, I think this is uh, important for um, the dongle to work with this adapter so um, just put the adapter to your left hand side USB slot just like that and there you just plug in your Wi-Fi dongle um, I got both of this stuff from Amazon I will put you the link into the description if you want to buy yourself an own set um, I I can only recommend this because I know it's working uh, uh, yeah so that's it it kinda looks like a weird antenna to it <laughs> with that Wi-Fi stuff on it and um, yeah let's start the um, configuration tool um, it will be located under settings under the settings section right there and it's called GCW connect this is the tool we want to start the application we want to start so let's launch it and this is the menu you get so the first thing we should do is um, to scan for access points so it will automatically enable your Wi-Fi and start scanning and here we are it found these four access points and mine is called internet box and as I showed you before it's WPA2 secured so you just choose that Wi-Fi by pressing the A button and since I already added my key it will directly connect to my Wi-Fi if you weren't connected and you haven't entered your key it will just ask you for the WPA key so you just enter your key and it will connect to the Wi-Fi it takes some time to connect um, but now it's connected and as you can see the power um, LED will indicate your active connection to your Wi-Fi so yeah now we are connected to our Wi-Fi and can access the internet to prove you guys that your RG350 now is really available in your Wi-Fi and so has access to the internet we will connect to its IP address I don't know if you can see it in the video um, mine got uh, 192.168.178.97 so 
Let's remember this IP address and make a new WinSCP connection completely wireless to our RG350. So here we are, back on our PC. Let's start WinSCP and connect to our IP address of the RG350 within our Wi-Fi. So I'm going to create a new target. Um, the protocol will still be um, secured FTP, so it's secured file transfer protocol. And now we have to enter the IP address of our RG350's Wi-Fi adapter. So it was 192.168.178.97. Username is still the same, so it remains with root. We don't have password protection, so we can just save this new target. I'm going to call it RG350 Wi-Fi. And that's it. So here's our new target. Target. Let's connect. And since this is the first connection I make, it's going to exchange the SSH key. So let's say yes. And we are connected to our RG350 completely wireless. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. I, I always hated all the cables around here so now I can just put it anywhere on my desktop um, and access my internal and external SD card. Um, I did some I did some testing with um, transfer speed and it pointed out that it only reaches 500 kilobyte per second so half a megabyte per second. For the moment I don't know why we have this bottleneck um, it might be software related because the Wi-Fi adapter I bought for this device um, supports up to 150 megabyte per uh, megabit per second, which is something around 15 or 16 megabyte per second. So this shouldn't be the problem. Um, I will keep looking for that. If I find any solution, I will let you guys know. But for now, that's pretty much it. What I want to show you guys now: we are connected to the internet with our RG350, and just to prove it, let's connect to our RG350 over Wi-Fi. So it's going to be 192.168.178.97. Okay, open it up. Yeah, it wants to exchange the security key. That's fine. And we can log in to it. And yeah, now... Uh, Let's take a look at the last proven test. Let's ping some server. Let's see if DNS is working. And as you can see, we can ping Google. I'm very interested what uh, what this will bring us for the future, since now we have the possibility to access the internet with the RG350. I think it opens up a completely new and huge world. I hope developers for this device find it useful and, and make use of this possibility. I believe it could, the RT350 can become a much more user-friendly device. A lot of things can be automated with internet connection and I really hope people will make use of this. Maybe we will also see multiplaying games. That would really be awesome. I think it's even worth uh, at least to have the freedom not to have a wired connection between your PC and your RG350. And I will try around more with it, see if I could get ROM scraping work in emulation station. That would be awesome if we just connect to the internet, do your ROM scraping, get all your box art and stuff on it. And yeah, you don't have to have the um, internet connection established for most of the time. I think it makes sense to do some update with it. So just connect it to the internet, do some update. And for the rest of the time, it's just a handheld that we, where we play our um, favorite retro games on. I'm quite happy we can use the left side USB uh, slot for it because the right hand side is used for charging. So you can use Wi-Fi while charging. And yeah, thanks for watching. Um, I hope you liked this video. Let me know in the comments what you think about uh, internet on the RT350. What would be your preferred features um, with with internet connection on this device? 
And if you like the video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel for further updates and happy gaming, guys. Bye.